So why Hadoop? How did this thing come about? So the good folks at Google actually looked at the patterns of what they were building and how they dealt with problems. Anytime you deal with larger problems, you're going to hit a point where it's no longer possible to do it in a single box. Right? You just simply run out of resources. You don't have enough CPU, enough memory, enough RAM, etc. Um, so what do you do? You could buy a bigger box, right? That's always an option. Uh, but the problem is bigger boxes are typically quite costly. And web companies don't really like to do that. They like to go for the sweet spot of buying the best price performance, which means commodity servers, right? So one issue is cost. The other is just scale. Uh, even the largest box in the world has a definite limit on the, the size of the problem it can handle. You can't buy a single box to index the entire web. Simply not possible. So what do you do? What you do is you build a distributed system. You build a system that actually splits out the processing over a large number of boxes. Right? So essentially you build a network of parallel processing boxes. And that really is the genesis of it. That's how it came about. And then people looked and saw that over and over, they were building the same kind of infrastructure. They were building a system that split out jobs across many boxes. Right? And when they looked at those, they saw that each time they approach it, they rewrite all the infrastructure pieces. The pieces that deal with how the data should move around, the pieces that deal with how jobs should be allocated, what do you do in case of failure. All those things are infrastructure. Right? They're the same regardless of your project. Um, and the thought came, hey, why don't we package this up and create infrastructure for it instead of rewriting it for every project? So that, together with this idea of a MapReduce model, which is a very simplified programming model that we'll talk about, was really the genesis of this whole thing. There was a MapReduce paper published that, that uh, informed a lot of things that have gone on since then. Um, that idea got picked up by an open source project called Lucene, which is an open source search uh, engine. Lucene, within it, built a MapReduce framework, which is eventually what turned into Hadoop, which we'll talk about uh, today. So why is this nice? Well, for one thing, it allows you a great deal of scale. With Hadoop, we can handle very, very large problems, some of the larger problems that exist today. In fact, if you look, what's interesting is a lot of web companies are using it, but also in the research world, for example, universities. A lot of folks that would in the past use, for example, a supercomputer are not taking a sort of a Hadoop approach. Because it's simple, you can get lots of hardware and, and you can go. It also allows for incremental growth. Again, if your strategy is just to scale up, buy bigger and bigger boxes, the increments at which you buy those are fairly large, right? We're talking about a large amount of money to go from a box of this size to a box of twice that size. The nice thing with a, with a distributed framework like this is you can add nodes as you want, as you need them. So if you've got 100 nodes and you need more, you can add 50 more. You can control the cost. Also, this is overall less costly, at least if that's a general thought, than that sort of scaling up. The idea is you buy, again, for the sweet, price, sweet point of the price performance curve, buy commodity hardware and put things on it. So you can really control the cost. And it's very flexible. The set of problems you can apply it to is really quite flexible, as we'll talk about. You can almost do anything with it, uh, which differentiates, differentiates it from a lot of the proprietary technologies.